Well, we bless God. Thank the Lord that hopefully spring is here and the weather is changing and the leaves are falling and we are just grateful for God, our Father, for allowing us to be a part of another season changing. So God is good. This is Pastor, of course. We're getting ready for perfecting class. I pray that you are doing well and enjoying the love, the mercy, and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is a good God. We thank him for this opportunity on this Lord's day of, of March the 20th, 2022. And as we get ready for the lesson, I want you to go ahead and mark in your Bibles. Our lesson text will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 10 through 23. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 to the 23rd verse. All right, the subject of our perfecting class lesson today is Christ, our only foundation. Christ, our only foundation. So let us get ready as we study God's word and ask for his blessings upon everything that we're going to hear and receive from the precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you for another opportunity to come together as a family by this medium of, of, of technology here. We are grateful and thankful for this opportunity. We ask that you take the words that are before us and the text and, and Make it come alive in the hearts of your sheep, your this listening audience. We just pray that there be revelation and insight and, 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 and just wisdom that's imparted upon your people. So again, we say thank you. Bless this perfecting class and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. And don't you think I forgot, I'm always appreciative, family. And grateful for those of you who take the time to be a part of our perfecting class. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. Now, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He takes the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ, and Christ is God. And our golden text is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For other foundations can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And what's today's aim? It's to be reminded that Christ is the believer's only foundation. The principle 
is to understand what it means to have no other foundation than Christ. The application is to make sure we faithfully build upon only Christ's foundation, realizing that the church is God's holy temple. Now, in today's lesson, Paul expounds upon what it means to live with Christ as our only foundation. As we serve the Lord, we are building his church, which is a holy temple of God. As we build, we dare not build anything but our best efforts and resources. And I love that. We are God's temple. We are his, his, his edifice. And as we build a representative of our lives, we want to make sure that we give our best efforts and resources for we are building to the glory of God himself. Now Paul begins by identifying himself as a wise master builder who has laid the foundation. He is speaking metaphorically about the foundational principles that he taught when he first established the church at Corinth. The basic foundational doctrinal principles, basic things, that you expect God's people to know. Basic things that people should build upon. Paul mentions, he calls them gold, silver, precious stones. These elements are metaphors for the true teaching that is in line with Paul's foundational doctrine. So Paul is using the example of gold, you know, uh, precious stones, all of these silver all of this is precious that you think of something very priceless and very precious. And he's using that as the true teaching that Paul is trying to build upon. But that other stuff that people are building upon, wood, hay, and stubble, are metaphors basically of erroneous teaching. Teachings that are in conflict with the truth of God's word. And so Paul says the trial by fire and what Paul speaks of primarily refers to the judgment on every believer's work when he stands before the Lord. Isn't that something? We will give an account of the things we've done upon this earth as we stand before God. Even as believers, we're not being judged, but we're giving an account. The Bible even teaches us that every idle word that we say, we have to give an account of. You know, so it just behooves some of us to just simply lock it up and keep it quiet. Amen. So Paul is saying that everyone should have basic foundational beliefs, basic things. And something else he goes on to imply as we introduce this lesson is that he's looking at the, the church and he's telling them that, listen, you have to be careful not to allow erroneous teaching to change your foundational beliefs. And so what Paul is saying is that you have, to, you have to realize that people are trying to change. They're trying to alter. They're trying to water down what God's word says. But you can't do that. God's word exemplifies exactly and means that everything that he wanted us to know. He said it specifically to us. And we have to honor and respect God's word. Sometimes you can have a, a guest preacher or someone come. And sometimes individuals can say things to the congregation. Sometimes the pastor has to go behind them to correct that. Or to make sure that they get the correct understanding. Because erroneous teaching can be given. It, it, it can be enough truth. Enough truth. But yet tainted or polluted with erroneous teachings. Look at the devil. Now, remember I gave you the example of, of how Satan basically tempted Jesus. And his, temp, his method that he utilized, of course, was one of the strategic things he used is that he misquoted scripture. Told Jesus, took Jesus up on a high place and cast yourself down. It's written, the angels will bear thee up. So for, no, he misquoted Psalms. He misquoted scripture. So it's dangerous, you know, a lot of times we hear things 
but 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 we have to make sure that we're able to check out things and read it and study it for ourselves so that's a very good example so one of the things we have to realize is that the church God's church we reiterate the fact that we do not want to be led astray we want to build upon a pure doctrinal foundation that has already been established so there's some things there's some basic things that we don't have to discuss the basic things that we don't have to talk about anymore we shouldn't have to review some of the basic doctrinal principles yeah it's almost like okay we're going back to our ABCs and, and arithmetic and so forth we should have graduated from that a long time ago there are basic principles that we don't have to rehearse. But look at the times that we live in, family. Look at the times we live in. The times we live in, never before have we had to actually make sure we teach our kids what's right and we guard. There's so much worldly teaching and, 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 and worldly exposure, and especially with the phones. The kids can be exposed to so much and so many different things. People are worshiping trees and people are, are worshiping nature and stuff like that. Uh, there's just so much out there. Listen, there's only one way. We have to agree upon that. The world was off course. Jesus Christ came. He died. Yes, he rose again from the dead. Those who believe in him shall receive everlasting life. Those are basics. There is no other way to come to the Heavenly Father but by Jesus. That's a basic foundation. You know, so it doesn't matter if you're good or it doesn't matter if you've been generous, if you give to the, the church and so forth. There is still no, you can't give your way into heaven and you can't be kind enough just to go to heaven. There are some foundational beliefs that, that should have been poured into your life where you realize that there's only one way that God has provided for us to reach him, to, to spend eternity with him. And that is through faith in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. There should be no other questions. So any other religion, any other form or any other method that someone tries to introduce you to, you, you can't even entertain it. You can't even uh, address it because it's er erroneous. And some people... I've talked to one lady I, I've often mentioned. She's an elderly lady, and she just, you know, just can't accept the fact that Jesus is the only way to God. She says, you mean to tell me, Pastor Reeves, that all of these religions and all you, all what, what these people believe, the Jews have their religion, the Chinese have their religion, so you mean to tell me that there's only one way to God? And, and all these other people are just wrong? Yes, that's what I believe. That's what the word says. That's a foundational belief. That's a foundational principle that we cannot waver. We cannot, we, 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 we cannot try to make accommodations for others. And God doesn't send people to hell. They choose to go when they reject his son. When they reject Jesus, they're making a choice to go. So I love that. Paul is saying there is a, as we as God's children, we have a strong foundation that we are built upon. And when you think about foundation, Paul says, listen, listen, there is no other foundation other than Christ and him crucified and was raised from the dead. That is our foundation. This is what we're believing. This is, this is what, we, what we're holding on to. This is what our grandfathers and, and relatives and others have depended upon. Even in the, on their deathbed, people, you have to make sure, very sure, that you know in whom you believe. You can't waver. Yes, everything is on the line. Christ is the solid foundation. Yes, he gave his life for us. He hung on that cross. He, he died and he was raised from the grave. So, that is a foundation. And when you think of a foundation, think of a home. When you're building a home, uh, a foundation is something that is very, very important. Normally, they would come and dig it out. 
They would put footers and so forth in. You see them put rebar and different things. But the foundation is what people, you know, on top of the foundation, you can do what you want to do. But they have to make sure that foundation is, is, is solid. That foundation is, is strong enough to hold whatever you place on top of it. You have refrigerators on top of the foundation. Bed sets on top of the foundation. Computers and people are walking on top of the foundation. You have air conditioning units being, being held up on the foundation. The foundation is even unseen. It's been covered up. You've got, you know, the, the, the slab, they call it, has been covered. Now you've got carpet on the foundation. You've got tile on the foundation. You've got hardwood. Whatever you want to put, you can put on the foundation. The foundation doesn't care. But the foundation has to be strong enough to hold whatever you put on. And think about, when you think about these skyscrapers that go hundreds of stories up in the air, uh, elevators and so forth, you know, when they go up high, they dig down deep. Because, again, that foundation has to be strong enough. And we're living in a time and a season where we have to be sure that Jesus, Jesus is our Lord and Savior. I don't, I don't want to spend time trying to debate with somebody. I don't want to spend time, you know, trying to uh, listen to what someone's trying to convince me that there could possibly be another alternative. There is no alternative. Jesus is the only way. Now, that might sound selfish to some people, but think about this. There can only be one truth. There can't be two truths. There can only be one. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No man cometh to the Father. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And I believe that. I'm living by that. I'm willing to die with that, that in my heart. Believing that Christ is the only way. And it doesn't matter whether or not uh, this Christianity uh, has conformed to the way you think it ought to be. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter uh, what life is thrown at you. You cannot allow circumstances to cause you to waver on your foundational principles. And that's where we are. We have to be show due diligence to make sure that we guard our children's hearts. Yes, we have to, as parents, as adults, we have to guard our children's heart. The world is trying desperately to, to give them false doctrine. Yes, I mean, how difficult is it to realize that even Mother Nature teaches you that there has to be a male or female, just, just the natural things of life. The children of today are being exposed to so much erroneous teaching and living. Yes, yes, erroneous. It's erroneous. Like I said, there are basic foundational things that they have to realize. And they go to school, they see two girls holding hands. They see two guys holding hands or hugging and kissing. They're confused. And we don't want that confusion to pass off on our children. So we have to be not reactive, but proactive. We have to let them know the basics. Who would have thought that we would have to reteach the basics? Who would have thought that we have to go over things that you would think would be simply common sense? But this is the time. This is the season that we're living in. We're living in a time where the world is doing everything it can to try to tear down the basic principles of God. And I said, even Mother Nature teaches you that you, you can't create or you can't procreate. You, you, you know, a, a man can't give birth. Only a woman. You know, two men can't have a child, can't bring birth to a child. No matter how hard they try, it won't happen. Who would have thought we would have to talk about this? But it's true. But we're living in a time where the enemy is running to and fro because he knows his time is short. And he's trying to do everything that he can to disrupt foundational principles. Jesus is the only way. He, he's trying to give people alternatives. And, and, and he, he, you know, he's coming against marriage. Come on. Marriage is the first institution that has been ordained by God. He comes against God's word. Come on. God's word settles everything. We don't have to question that. 
If God said it, it's automatically settled. So we understand this. And we have to realize that it's the foundation. If we can get cracks and, and the foundation to buckle, then it doesn't matter what you've built upon the foundation. It will buckle and come down also. Sometimes you walk around buildings, you see homes, and you see sometimes the foundation starts to settle. And you see little cracks in the wall. That's just that's showing you that the foundation is an issue with the foundation, not the wall, but the foundation that's that is the wall is sitting on the foundation. That's what the problem is. So the enemy is very, very smart, very, very crafty and deceitful. Who would have thought but we that we would have to spend time talking to our kids about about, you know, just the basic things. You know, being attracted to the opposite sex is not wrong. Matter of fact, that's the way God intended it. And then God has a, a great institution that he brings the opposite sex, a, a male and female together in holy matrimony, to live a holy life. There are basic things. But look at, look at how much is under attack. What about life? Life itself. Think about that. Think about the children. Think about the children. Think about uh, the, the life. The gift is life. Think about all the children, you know, whom, whom haven't been even given an opportunity to live, to experience this gift to call life. Think about that. The basic things. The basic things. You know, he might be a bomb, but he's still alive. If this person is a senator or this person is the president, I know they have all the status, in it, but guess what? Even a bomb has been given the opportunity to experience this thing called life. And think about all the children, all the children who have not even been given a chance. Basic stuff, family, with nothing to argue about, nothing to hold up signs and protest and picket. Yeah, basic opportunity is that we have to realize that Christ is our foundation and we have to we have to be as i said before we have to be not reactive but proactive making sure that our children have an understanding yes we can't be be uh neutral we can't sit back and say yo oh well let, you know i don't have to teach them some of this basic stuff you better because the world is teaching them what they want them to know and what they want them to 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 think is true and they're doing a better job and they're spending much more money than we are trying to show them our totally different doctrine a totally different way so paul is using very powerful metaphors he's, he's telling us we are god's people we are god's children it doesn't mean that everything is perfect everything is comfortable but we are god's children and he loves us and he goes on a little further let us know that listen he talks about us being the temple of God. Now, in the Old Testament, you remember, the temple of God dealt specifically uh, with a building and the edifice. You have, you, you have the, you know, the outer court, the inner court, and then the holies of holies where God's presence, where the priest would come in and make atonement, uh, a sacrifice on behalf of the people and himself and the people. But we realize now, as a result of what Jesus did, Hallelujah. As a result of Jesus being crucified on that cross, dead, buried, and raised again, he made an opportunity for the precious Holy Spirit to not only reside, not only to reside on earth, but also within the believer. What a privilege. What an honor. We, the church, when we come together, with God's presence and his anointing with us. We are his temple, the church is. So God is no longer just dwelling in the building. And we understand that, we respect that, but we don't forsake now the assembling of ourselves coming together. As Pastor says, some of you gotten real comfortable. I understand that, you know, real comfortable home and, and listening to and utilizing the technology, and we appreciate that. But you have to also come back. You have to come together. Because, we, again, what do we use as a foundation? We use the scripture as a foundation. We don't continually forsake the assembly. There's something about God's people when they come together. There's something about God's people 
as they worship together, as they lift up their voices together. It's very important. So Paul is telling us something, that we are precious. Under the Old Testament, they had a physical structure, Solomon's temple, or whatever you want to refer to it as, where God's presence, God would meet them in that temple. But now look at the much better covenant that we have. We have the awesome privilege of, of being mobile. We are a mobile temple. Yes, what do you mean by that, Pastor? We carry God with us. Say, say with us. Yeah, we carry God with us. God resides in us. So we ought to be spending more time concentrating on what's in us than what's in the world. I love what the scripture tells us. Greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. So we have a powerful, powerful resource. We have a powerful, powerful friend, a comforter, a partner who resides with us. I need to get to know him and you need to get to know him. Because he's there to help us, to be with us. So I'm, I'm wonderful. I'm grateful for what Paul is saying. Paul said, let's get something straight too. Now, there's a lot of things under the old covenant we don't have to do. No, we don't have to worry about it. We have a better covenant. And what's that? This is a foundational principle. God has now taken up residence within you as a believer. So that's why it's so special. When each of us come together, when God's people come together, then we can experience what is called corporate worship. Individually, our anointings and God's presence all come together. Hallelujah. We have a glorious time. And we are, we are believing and expecting God. There will be miracles. There will be breakthroughs as we do so, family. So this is wonderful. And so he's saying we are the temple of God. And the precious, precious Holy Spirit dwells within us. That's why, as, as I've been teaching on the Holy Spirit, we, want to agree, we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. We don't want to offend the Holy Spirit. We want to make sure that the Holy Spirit has free course in our lives. It's to our advantage that the Holy Spirit, amen, has free course in our lives. So think about that. You and I, we are the temple of God. We have the precious, precious Holy Spirit dwelling within us. And that's why he says, now, yeah, Paul said, be careful. He issues a stern warning to anyone who would bring harm to God's temple. So again, the word teaches us that we are to be careful how we treat and handle people. We don't really know who God's chosen people are. And we don't want to put our mouths on people. We don't want to say things. Just, if, you know, just be quiet. Just, as I said before, just change the channel. If you see something on television that you don't agree with, just change the station. Use the remote. Power of the remote. You can use it. Yes. So, but quite to the contrary, you need to pray for those who mishandle you. Especially if you know that you're God's child. God doesn't tolerate that family. He does not tolerate that. And I've lived long enough to see a lot of things occur with people. A lot of things. Yes, you have to be very careful, family. Very careful. And realize that the, this, what the Bible says is true. We are the temple of God. The precious Holy Spirit resides within us. And people have to be careful how they treat us careful what they say about us and how they talk about us. Very careful. Very careful. And that's why he says we are God's temple and the Holy Spirit resides within us. Very, very important. So we have to really think about it. You know, and you know what we need to have? There needs to be a recommitment to, to certain teaching. A recommitment to certain beliefs. A recommitment to the basics. And this is what Paul is teaching. Paul is saying, there's only one foundation. The basic principles and the basic things that you've learned about Christ and, and him being the only way to heaven and, and about, uh, you know, the, 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 the sanctity of life, the gift of life, that's given by God. 
and just the basic principles of, of a male and a female being God's perfect way and all this other stuff is being shown. Basic stuff. Yes, we're going to have to address basic things with our children and even with some adults. You, you know, sometimes circumstances and situations cause some people to waver and sometimes to, to give in to erroneous teaching. But this is why we have to be sure, very sure, that we have built our lives on solid foundation, none other than Christ. That's, he's the one family that we're holding on to in our darkest night, in our darkest hour. He's the one. And there are some of you out there now that you have a personal testimony of how God brought you through. That's a solid foundation. You know, just because circumstances, just because situations, just because uh, money and things are, uh, you know, a little tight now for everyone, that doesn't change anything about God, doesn't change anything about his method or his way to heaven. That foundational principle is still the same. It doesn't matter if we're in 2022 or God tarries, we'll be in 2032. His foundational principles are still the same. And you see the generations come and generations go, but the word of God is still here. People have tried to burn it. They have tried to get rid of it. But the word of God still abides. You know why? Because it's God's word. And heaven and earth will pass away before one tot or tittle of God's word does. So think about that. There are foundational things that we have to believe on and trust God with family and Paul has done an excellent job and he finally closes as I get ready to close he finally closes with them he said he he, he basically points back to, to, to the Lord's presence being within the believer but he also talks to the church about watch out for division and what what kind of vision what was happening it, anytime you have more than one of anything you have an opportunity to compare uh, there were favorite leaders or, or preachers in the church. Some was dividing himself up, you know, some like Paul, some like Apollos, and some like Peter. So people, you ain't care, people can have their favorite, you know, pastors and favorite television evangelists. You can have their favorites because they're all gifted in their own way. Yes, you know, some say Jesus lives. You know what? And some another one can say Jesus is alive, saying the same thing. You know, some one might say it with enthusiasm or, 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 or virtue, and others may just simply talk and teach. The foundation that we have to realize is not necessarily how they're saying it; it's what they're saying, because we can't get caught up in the in the in the glamour of oh boy, he it was surely beautiful and eloquent. We have to be more concerned with the content. The content of what they're saying. So that's more important than, than the eloquence of how they said it. So here, Paul, just like we do, we have to deal with issues, basic things. Paul is saying, don't get caught up in your, with your favorite preacher. That's good. But you, if you get caught up, make sure that you're understanding and all that getting, get an understanding and make sure whatever they're saying is built upon foundational principles that will not change, that cannot change. Amen and amen. There is only one gospel. And it's, it's family again, as I said before, I never thought we'd be in a time where we would have to make sure, very sure, that we combat everything. There's so much coming at the children now and, and the adults. There's so much exposure to the iPhone. The phone can take them anywhere and talk to anyone and show them anything. All this is exposed. Never before, never before has the world desperately tried to, to redo marriage and, and make, 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 you know, a man and a man a marriage. Make a, 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 a female, a lady and a lady and make them a marriage. No, we know the foundation. And without that foundation, you and I wouldn't be here. You and I, we know the foundation. We may not 
have met your mom or dad, but I guarantee you, you had one. And it's the only way you got here or a pastor got here. Those are foundational things. Isn't that crazy? Foundational things that we now have to teach and reemphasize with our children and with people. There's a lot of beliefs out there, family. People are believing a lot of things. But here's what we have to do. Make sure with our family and make sure with ourselves that our foundational beliefs will not be moved because they're, from, they're made of gold, silver, and precious stone. Not wood, hay, and stubble. Uh -uh. We're on a solid, a solid foundation. And we thank God. As we go forward, and we continue, that's why it's so important, and I, I give you accolades again for teaching and coming into the teachings that pastors have been given, for being a part of perfecting class. I, I salute you, yes, because it's here we can study the word and get a good understanding. We need the basics again. We need to go back, go back and teach the basics because the world is doing everything it can to try to prove that the Bible is outdated and old-fashioned. The devil is a lie. I don't care if it was in the cake. I don't care if it was the caveman. I don't care if it's the spaceman. Sin is sin. That's a foundational belief and truth. And both need a Savior. So it doesn't matter who you are. Sin has not changed. Oh, but we've got this technology now. Yeah, but sin has not changed. That's a foundational truth. Sin is still sin. You know, one generation came up doing it one way, and this generation is doing it another way. It's still sin, family. So there's basic things we have to believe. And don't let that be shaken. You know, see, and right now there's a shaking going on. But we don't want to let anything that we believe and trust with God to be shaken. We have a strong foundation. And to God be the glory. To God be the praise. Thank you for being a part of another perfecting class. And this is Pastor. We love you. And again, we take this opportunity to invite you. Come on out. Come on out with us and worship with us. We're worshiping God. And we're giving God praise and honor. And we have... Our church conference on this fourth Sunday and you don't want to miss that it's going to be a very very enlightening experience to see and hear what God is doing on behalf of the church so we love you we thank God for you again God keep you is our prayer and God bless